Yo, let's be honest. This Christian life hurts sometimes. It's very, very difficult sometimes. I'm not going to act like it's always joy and always peace all the time. Although in the midst of the trials, there is peace and there is joy. Even though there's stress, deep sadness, deep hurt, healing, tough processes, and things of that nature. If God's taken us from faith to faith and from glory to glory, as he says, just like a warrior goes through training, it's going to be very uncomfortable very difficult times that you feel like you're gonna die sometimes going through warrior infantry training times where you want to give up times where you scream you yell you cry you're emotionally distraught but you know that god's with you because his word says that he's always with you and i'm gonna tell you that sin that you want to go back to that temptation that you're facing or that you're gonna face tomorrow or the next day, or whatever it is, it's worth it to endure, to submit to God, and to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Man, I went through the craziest temptations today, and thoughts of temptations, because I got hit with everything at once. Everything at once, I was hurting bad, bad. For two hours. But you know what? I endured. I endured through it. I resisted. I said, no, devil, in my heart. I said, no, there's nothing back there for me, bro. There's nothing but hurt in my old sinful habits. There's nothing but hurt. There's nothing but anxiety. There's nothing but anger. There's nothing but depression. There's nothing but self-sabotage. There's nothing there but emptiness apart from Jesus Christ and the love of God and the peace of God and the joy of God through his spirit. It doesn't compare. When you have a relationship with his Christ and, and w w with Jesus Christ, and with the word of God, and you can feel his spirit and his presence every day, you don't want to give that up. There's nothing that compares. It's like honey on my lips. A relationship with Jesus Christ. It's so sweet. It's so powerful. When you start to get close to him, you start to worship him all throughout the day. You start to pray all throughout the day. You start to memorize scripture. You start to have a closeness with him. You start to look forward to any moment that you can have alone with him because it's so sweet and powerful. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost with fire, bro, the fire of God to which you see this passion and, and, and where his joy comes and, and, and his fire, his passion, his zeal, his peace, his joy. There's nothing that compares to that. You try to go back, man, and it just doesn't compare. You feel empty. There's nothing that compares. It's worth it. I endured today and resisted for two hours straight and cried and cried and cried through it, which just drove around in my car, man, and cried because I didn't even have strength to pray or to do my normal warrior voice and, and warrior against the devil and telling him to get back and this and that and using my sword and speaking the word of God and all that stuff that I usually do. I didn't even have the strength today. I was so overwhelmed. I was feeling so much hurt and sadness from a bunch of different things going on in my life right now. But I held on to my faith and I just cried and I just cried out to Jesus and he got me through. It's worth it to endure. It is not worth it to go back to that sin. Don't go back. Do not go back. Hold the line. Hold your ground. Stand fast because it's not worth it, bro. There's nothing for you back there. The devil only has cheap imitations of what God wants to give you through a relationship with him and his word, his holy Bible.
If you're not in church, I wasn't in church for months until a few weeks ago where God led me to this church. Now I'm getting fed the word of God in Jesus' name. Not that I do. I read every single day and memorize scripture, but I'm with other like-minded believers. And God says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, which is the habit of some in these last days. Such as is the habit of some will depart from the assembling of but we are not of those people. We will be faithful to the word of God. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Why do you call me Lord if you don't do what I say? Let's stay close to him. Let's lean on each other when we need to reach out for prayer. Let's not hide about what we're going through because you're only hurting yourself when you do that. Find a fellow believer, if you don't have one, and a church to gather with fellow believers. Just ask God. He said, you have not because you ask not. You're not asking me, so you don't have, basically. We need each other. We need the body of Christ. We need to stick together. We need to talk about what we're struggling with in our heart, in our minds, in our actions. How else do you think we're going to make it through this battle? How the heck does an army become an army if it's not hundreds and thousands of individuals fighting together to accomplish the mission? It just doesn't happen. You can be a great, mighty warrior, but I'm sorry. When there's a bunch of other people involved against you, you're not going to win. You're eventually going to die. Spiritually. We need to lean on each other. We need to be accountable to ourselves first, but then we have other brothers and sisters that are put in our lives clearly to help us, to speak into us. Woe unto the man or the woman that doesn't have somebody to pick him or her up when she's hurting, when they've fallen into temptation. Now, here's another thing that I want to say. Don't give it all, all your information and all your business to people. I don't care whether it's people you know, family, whatever it is. Watch the reaction of people when you start telling people that you're having victory in your life and you're doing good. Watch their reaction. Pay close attention to the reactions of people when you tell them about the good that God is doing in your life and how you're advancing and becoming successful and God's doing great things in your life. Watch how they react and pay attention to how people react when you say certain things. Pay attention. One of the greatest gifts is the gift of discernment. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. If you can discern somebody's spirit, a lot of people think that they're fooling you, but you can discern what's going on. It's wise to just be silent about a lot of things. People ask how you're doing. Unless you feel led to share all your information, I'm doing good. How are you? you don't, you're not obligated to explain yourself to anybody. You need to guard your heart in this season. Because a lot of people are dealing with unclean spirits and false motives. And they don't even know it. You need to be careful because not everybody is sincere. Very few people are truly sincere and truly for you. Be careful in this season. Resist temptation. Stay close to Jesus Christ in his word and in prayer and in worship. And lean on your brothers and sisters when you need to. Reach out for prayer. Be honest with your brothers and sisters about what you're going through. Don't hide. Don't do it alone. We need to stick together more than ever in this season. I'm available if you want to message me, if you want to pray over the phone, anything like that. You got something going on, you're struggling, I'm available. I love you, I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to love on you and I'm going to pray for you because that's what Christ would do. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a promise. Stand strong, hold the line in this last season of the earth. In Jesus' name.